Welcome back. It's the Flow Friday Sports Show on Flow FM, and it is time to have a look at the Riverland Footy League with Ben Venning. He's on the line with me. How's it going, Beaver? Yeah, good, mate. How are you? Going very well, thank you. Very keen to hear about, uh, well, three big blowouts from last weekend. Probably a bit more eager to get stuck into the action tomorrow because there's uh, plenty on the line. But before we get to that, let's go through last weekend's games. Uh, Berry hit a patch of good form over the last couple of weeks, but sort of back to their old ways. No match for the Wakery Magpies. Absolutely flogged them. 20 goals, 8, 128 to 4 goals, 630. Yeah, no, it was a big win by the boys and, um, you know, a good win to have in front of, uh, we had sponsors day, so quite a few sponsors there and a good crowd went along and, um, yeah, good for the boys to put on a show and they certainly did that, a uh, very easy win. Um, you know, Benny Smith, a uh, local lad here, has been playing a lot in the centre and, um, you know, having some great games and, you know, featuring as our best quite a bit in recent times and, and getting best a lot, so that's great. Um, Zach Steele playing down at fullback. He had a good game as well. Uh, Tommy Sherman across halfback with Geezer as well. Um, they both uh, repelled a lot of uh, Demons attack and yeah, um, set us up from there and had another great game. Jared B and the best players as well. And Tazzy Wood, who's been playing mainly B grade at the start of the year and has come in and filled in while we've had a few out. And uh, he got six best, but wasn't enough to keep him in the side this week. He gets dropped this week, so... Um, poor Tazzy, that's a bit of a shame for him, but yeah, it just shows how strong we are at the moment and uh, hitting form at the right time of year going into um, you know, the last night around this weekend against Lots of North. Doesn't matter really if we lose or win. Um, you know, just want to keep that form going to get through that first semi final um, when we play Loxon in a couple of weeks. Spots are hard to earn in the A grade at this time of year. Everyone's priming for finals, so uh, an unfortunate situation there. But nevertheless, a great win by the Magpies and a very consistent win too. The goal kickers, uh, no one kicking more than three and the quarter-by-quarter quarter scores, uh, very consistent for, for the Pies the whole way through. So great win there to get ready for finals. Big win by Renmark over Loxton as well, 19-9-123 to three goals, one nineteen. just getting over that 100-point margin. Yeah, no, look, Remark are really starting to uh, impress, aren't they? I mean, um, some of the wins they've had in recent times have been massive. And, um, you know, uh, you can probably say Barmer was a dominant team early on when they won something like nine or ten in a row. Um, and, you know, Remark sort of, you know, sitting there in second and just coasting along and they're just starting to hit their straps going into finals. And, um, you know, to, to beat a side by that, you know, when, you know, that's basically... Uh, first or second uh, equal, you know, Renmark's, you know, first or second equal with Bar at the moment. To beat the fourth side by that sort of, you know, amount is, is huge. So uh, it's not good for footy, really. But anyway, um, Renmark are, are up and about. And look at their first three best players there, Dan. Tim Wolford, Dan Wolford and, and Matt Wolford. So um, unbelievable year those boys are having. And, um, yeah, setting the standard in that club. Um, Zach Garcher in the ruck had a good one with four best as well. Perry and Edwards, the other two better players. Loxton for them, Walton, Harder, Green, Evans, Kennedy and the Prince tried their best, but Ramart way too good. Gillard and Perry kicking three. Hem, Rowe, Smith, Wolford, Zunick two. Blight, Garrett, Wolford one. For Loxton, Jesse Will, their captain, kicked two. And Ross Romeo over one. So, yeah, Tigers need to find a bit of form um, heading into finals and no doubt they'll try and do that this weekend. The Wolfords dominant in that one, and uh, it's not just in the Riverland Footy League, it's all throughout Country SA. There are some uh, seriously dominant families uh, running around for a lot of the teams out there in plenty of the leagues that we cover. Renmark, just one of the lucky teams to have one of those dominant families running around for them. Barmer Monash getting on the road and getting a good win over Loxton North as well on the weekend, 13-8-86 to 4 6 Yeah, no good win by these guys. Um... I mean, you look look at the uh, goal kickers for, for Bar and Wanash, and uh, one name pops up who's obviously leading the goal kicking equal at the moment uh, with Nick Gellard from Remark in, in John o Beach. Um, he kicked eight in the weekend and, um, you know, hasn't played all year, um, had a baby and has been missing a few games as well. So just shows you how dominant he is uh, when he's up and about in our league and um, certainly going to be someone that... Uh, Everyone will be watching come finals time and, and could be the deciding factor grand final day if it is a bummer and uh, Remark or whoever it is in the grand final. But, yeah, great game by him. He was clearly best. Um, Jake Smith had a, a few injuries earlier in the year and he's back in there now in the midfield. He's playing good footy. He got second. Mitchell, Austin, Butterworth and Drugamata, the other better players for them. For Locks and North, uh, Jolly Worsold always tried his hardest. Zach Wolf just had a great year for them. Sherpy, 
Kudra back from overseas, Hample and Eckerman, they're other better players. Goal kickers, Barmer, like I said, Beach with eight, Barnes, Bonnie, Freeman, Ogle and Smith with one. For North, Coney, Nitschke, Patch and Wolf, uh, Worsfold, sorry, um, they're goal kickers. So, yeah, good win by the Barmer boys and that'll fire them up going this weekend against Renmark. Well, let's get straight into that clash against Renmark. It is a uh, Rovers home game. Top two sides. They've been the top two pretty much all year. Uh, They're both sitting at 12-3, and so the winner gets top spot. But uh, as you alluded to, I reckon it might be a bit more intriguing, the battle for the leading goal kicker, Nick Gillard and John O'Beach, uh, one in each forward 50 tomorrow. And whoever kicks more goals wins the uh, league's leading goal kicker award. So plenty at stake in this game. Yeah, no, look, should be a ripper game. It's one of those interesting ones where it's, it's you know, the last round. Um, you know, they play each other in the last round, Renmark, Barmer. Um, they'll play each other the week after. That's already determined. Um, you know, Wakery and Loxton can't, can't finish first or second. So it's one of those hard ones, I guess, as a coach. You know, you're going out there to win. Are you playing games? Um, are you playing injured players? Are you giving them a week off? Um, you know, so it be interesting what both, both coaches do this weekend and Samson and Vader, but... Um, you know, I know that you know, in, you know, in our heyday, I guess the Waker were winning all our flags. You know, we definitely, no matter what the situation, we're always out there to win, and I'm sure that both were this weekend. And like I said, Beach and Gillard going for it. Um, who can stop Beach? He's obviously really dominated this year. Um, you know, hasn't played as many games probably as Gillard, but um, uh, you know, just you know, kicks eight on the weekend and gets best. And so I don't know who's going to actually go to him. Um, you know, from the from the uh, Renmark side, could be Blight. Uh, could be one of the Wolfords. Who knows? Um, but uh, they obviously have their hands full. And, yeah, same down the other end with Gillard, obviously having a great year as well. So, um, you know, whether it's Aiden Lyon that goes to him or Saxon Mitchell. But, um, yeah, good luck to those two having a kickoff off for their own little individual award. But, yeah, I think uh, going on recent form, oh, I just, I've got a feeling about Remark that it's coming on the right time of year. The Wolfords are up and about. They've got a lot of depth there. Um, you know, got a state country ruckman who's going to feed the Wolfords all you know, all game, and, um, you know, if they can stop Beach, geez, um, I reckon Remark could have a snip this weekend and set it up for what's going to be an interesting final the week after, so I'll, I'll, I'll go with Remark. Always an interesting dynamic when the top two teams play off in the last round and you know they're destined to play in a final. Do you uh, go all out and try and win? Do you leave a few tricks up your sleeve? So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But do you reckon they're going to be feeding uh, Beach and Gillard and really working hard to win one of them that goal kicker award? Or uh, do you think that'll take a back seat to just trying to win the game? Oh, look, I don't know. It'd be interesting when you get to the last quarter and, you know, um, the game's tied or one's easily winning and, you know, Actually, someone's keeping count and Beach needs one goal to kick you out. Yeah, do you give them the handball? I don't know. I don't know. Does it much does it really matter at the end of the day, I guess? But, um, oh, look, we'll find out, I guess, won't we? We'll, we'll hear some stories. I'll, I'll find out from Jack Albrecht, who plays for Barmer, who works for me. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll feed, feed you the information next week. But, yeah, it should be interesting. All right, stay tuned. We'll learn a bit more about that next week. Uh, Wakery going on the road to play against Loxton North tomorrow. Uh, as you said, Wakery pretty much locked into third. They're a game and about nine percentage clear of Loxton. So theoretically, a Wakery loss by a big margin and a Loxton win over Berry by a big margin could flip their spots on the ladder, but uh, I don't think it's even really worth discussing that any further. It's that unlikely. But uh, yes, Wakery travelling to play Loxton North tomorrow. Yeah, look, no, look, uh, Loxton North obviously will be disappointed with their year. Um, they're a pride club and uh, have been, you know, played in a lot of finals in recent times, beaten us a few times as well. And, you know, they won't be happy with uh, how they've finished this year. But, um, you know, like all clubs, they go through, you know, good times and bad times. And, you know, right now they're probably struggling a little bit. And, um, you know, they've got some, some older guys that are probably at the end. And, you know, you look at like someone like Ryan Proud, you know, who knows it could be his last game. Um, you don't know. I mean, I'm hearing whispers it might be, but... Uh, He's, uh, he's lining up this weekend anyway at 4-4, so um, hopefully he doesn't have a big bag um, kicked on kicked on him. Oh, sorry, kicked on us. Um, so hopefully Zach Steele can do the job on him uh, for Wakery. But, yeah, look, um, not much really to play for here. Like you said, I don't think it matters if, if Wakery finishes third or fourth. So our boys are just going out there to try and find their form, get Cherry right for that final of the week after. And look, we're pretty well full strength. I think the only player we're missing that could possibly go in would be Cooper Mackerel. So, um yeah, probably one of the best sides we've put out there all year and uh, hopefully the boys can go there and uh, get the job done and get that momentum going in for the week after. Very good time to be putting uh, one of the best sides all year out on the park. 
priming for finals next week. Last game of tomorrow, though, Berry hosting Loxton. So Berry will be hoping to finish their season on a high. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, um, they had that little purple patch, didn't they? They won a couple of games in a row, and everyone's like, oh, here comes Berry, you know, lock, knocking off Loxton, Loxton North. And, but then a bit of reality hits back in when they come up against Remark and lose by 100 points and lose to Wakery by 98. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, better year than last year. They didn't win a game last year. Um, you know, they've won two this year, so that's obviously a progression. Um, but, yeah, I'm um, still not happy where they're sitting. And they're obviously going to look to next year to recruit heavily, no doubt, and, and, and you know, get their, um, some more out of their younger players. And, um, yeah, to finish off the year, it wouldn't be great for them. But Loxton, they need to find some form, obviously, you know, against Randmark last week. wasn't a great result. Um, so they're going to have to turn it around this week and, and get some momentum going into that first final against Wakery. So, look, um, yeah, could go either way, couldn't it? But you'd like to think Loxon, who are going to be playing finals a week after, should should beat bottom of the ladder and Barry. And uh, you'd imagine that should happen this weekend. All right, plenty at stake tomorrow. Huge round in the Riverland Footy League. Looking forward to getting a big recap of it next week, Beaver. Thanks for your time. We'll chat to you then. Go on in, Dan. See you, mate.